Hey, Woodcutters Topsaw here. Um, today I have a couple students who want to learn all about tree work. So this video is called Tree Work 101. Uh, they want to learn about felling, logging, a little bit about climbing. So we have this pine tree is coming down and the pine tree in the back uh, is getting limbed up. I have some really cool drone footage at the end, so stay tuned for that. Um, so this is my Husky 395 with a 28 inch bar, full wrap handle. It's really a big saw. It is kind of hard to learn on because it is so heavy, but it does have that full wrap. So he's doing his face cut here. They didn't line up actually perfectly. So he's trying to carve it to clean it up so that they will have a nice clean face cut. Now he's coming through the back. Um, and you could see I put a couple little marks around the side of the tree to make sure you're coming in on the flat here. On that note, I would never do any of this unless you're well trained in it and trained by a professional. Injuries here can be catastrophic. So it never really fell without a wedge. So there's an ax and a wedge driving the wedge in the back. Um, and then now I'm actually over there as well, banging that wedge in and trying to get it to lift up a little bit. There's still a lot of meat in the hinge. I tell you, it might be a two, two, three inch hinge left of wood. Um, but I got a little bit nervous that it was going to fall back and go over backwards into that manzanita behind it and really be a big mess, fall, fall over the property line. So because of that, uh, we, we decided just to be 100% safe to put a rope into it and pull it over as it's getting cut just to guarantee it doesn't fall into the neighbor's yard and make a big mess. So you could see the rope on it there now, giving it a tug with the truck. And that first tug is really just the rope tightening up, breaking off a few limbs. And then now that that rope is cinched up, you could see I give it a good tug and it's coming right over, no problems at all. So here's a cut right here. You can see the face cuts a little bit less than a third, which is a good idea on such a small um, diameter pine. And you can see that hinge, that break hinge, is consistent across, which is a good, and probably two inches. The problem with these wedges is you can't really drive them very far, um, especially with the bar in there. So one chance is you could double stack them and then the other idea, you could always drive them in the side. And as that wedge is closer to that pivot point, it's going to lift more. So remember about an inch of lift in the back of that tree might be up to, you know, five feet of move of the tip. So those wedges are kind of the key. But just to be super safe in this case, we ended up putting a rope in it and pulling it over. The really small diameter pines are tricky because with the bar width, it's hard to drive the wedge in, as you can see right there. All right, trees down, and now we're just limbing it up. Um, limbing it up is different if it's going to the mill. If it's going to the mill, the, the limbs can have absolutely no stubs. So if you got a stub sticking out like this right here, the mill will get really irritated. So the butt has to have a nice clean cut, the top has to be small, and no stubs on the logs. And then now this is the second pine. That's just a throw line up over a few different limbs. And then the rope is getting pulled up. This tree is going to get limbed up using all my climbing gear. Here's a tie-in right here. That's a Petzl zigzag with a double rope technique. The most important thing when you're climbing is that saw is never running unless you got two key safe tie-in places. So both a rope and a steel core flip line are clipped in and you're into the tree before you ever fire that chainsaw up. You cut your rope, um, it could have catastrophic consequence and it is actually easier to do than one would think. So I said this before, but safety really has to come first. Um, the best way is to see, to get a job as a groundman with the tree service and when there's a little extra time, see if you could learn to climb a little bit, you know, with a mentor. So this is a student in my climbing gear right here. Again, double rope technique, uh, the flip line around it, and just kind of working his way up. Because it is a pruning, you can't use any spurs at all. And that's why you throw the rope up first. If you use spurs on a tree like this, uh, it just puts all these punctures in it. 
They bleed sap, bad for the health of the tree, and could attract bark beetle. So kind of pulling himself up with double rope technique, if he could get to the place where there's just a few little stubs that he could get his foot on, like right there on his left foot, then he could step up on those and then tighten the rope up. So really, the point of stepping on these stubs isn't to really carry all your weight, but just a little bit of weight so it's easier to pull yourself up. It's hard to double rope technique on a pine. Um, he is going over a couple of different limbs, so in case one of those limbs failed, he would be okay, wouldn't hit the ground. And he also has that flip line in as well the whole time. So if one rope were to fail, it wouldn't be pretty, but you wouldn't hit the ground and get too hurt. So you can see right there, this is a drone, why they want this pine tree limbed up, um, how spectacular a view it is. So he's working his way up, cutting, cutting the limbs, leaving pretty long stubs to stand on and keep his weight on. And then once he sets a rope at the top, he'll be able to come down and clean all those stubs up. So it's kind of flying in on the drone. You can see him there in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. He's doing a great job. It's tricky. It's not easy getting started doing tree work. So it has a handsaw as well, which I like so you could hear pretty well um, when you're cutting. So you can see he's tied at the top, double rope technique. And that flip line is going around the tree. So two tie-in points. You do forget how scary it is when you've been doing it for a long time um, and how slow it goes. So he has that tie-in point all the way around the trunk over a limb. And now he's lowering himself back down with the flip line. And the flip line is able to catch on those stubs. The stubs are a little bit long to get the flip line just to go over them. But if the saw is not running, you could unclip it and then clip it back in before you cut. Using a little husky um, climbing saw to clean up a bit, clean those stubs up. Beautiful view. What a beautiful office right there. I mean, if you like climbing, it is a great, it is a great trade to have. It's a great career. The only key thing is that you, you, know, you develop safe habits so you can keep doing it, and you also develop habits that will keep your body sustained for a career, for a lifetime career. Um, you never want to go crazy. You never want to go hard. You never want to go fast. You just really want to go slow and methodically. That will keep you safe for the day and also keep you healthy so you'll be able to do it year after year. So you can see with that one pine gone and this pine limbed up, how spectacular a view it's going to be for this house. That drone, I don't know, the drone might be like 40 feet up right here or so, and he's maybe 30 feet up in the tree with another 30 feet above him. I call this video Tree Work 101, so I'm teaching these two students. Uh, you know, basic tree work, a little bit of felling, a little bit of climbing, how the logs need to look if they're going to the mill. Uh, if you like this channel and you're new to it, think about subscribing. Uh, this channel is all things wood, from tree work to woodwork. I teach high school wood shop, and then on the weekends I do tree work, where I bring in uh, the logs into the school where we mill them up. We have a really nice Woodmiser LT15. Uh, I love that Woodmiser mill. I love the idea that kind of these logs that I have to get rid of anyway are able to be turned into cool wood projects. Uh, currently, I have a couple kids who just love milling, and they're just out there every day milling lumber, so we have more lumber than we know what to do with, and then the rest of the kids are in the shop making cool projects. So it's, it's a nice gig. I mean, I, I love my job. Only thing I like more in tree work is actually teaching high school wood shop. But I do look forward to the weekends of being outdoors and just working, working hard with no talk. That's always a nice thing.
Well, there it is. Another day of tree work, and it's good to be alive. Um, I'd like to hear your comments below. I really enjoy reading them. I appreciate you watching these videos, and hit like if you like the video. Thank you.